Hello, my name is Anthony Schiffmar, and in this video series, we're going to talk about how you can make your own quadcopter from the grounds up. So how to get started making your own quadcopter from scratch. This video series, we plan to make around six or maybe even more if there's part one and part two or part A and part B. But the goal over here is to design your own quadcopter while trying to minimize buying off the shelf products. And it might sound like a very tedious role or tedious process, but the amount of knowledge you could learn or gain is quite fulfilling. We're gonna divide the project into more or less two parts, which is the embedded stack and the flight dynamics and control. In the embedded stack, the first video series is gonna be about how you can interface radio between the host computer and the, and the MCU. MCU in this case is the microcontroller unit. What we won't be doing in this video series is our goal is to not utilize or use a off the shelf flight controller because where's the fun in learning if you just buy something off the shelf and then tweak some high level parameters to get something working. Sure, that's fun to make the drone fly, but there's very little learning you can really you can get done. Our goal over here is to improve on your embedded system skills, how to select the right components, how to write software, and then how to write the algorithms to understand when you're writing the algorithms such as sensor fusion, as we'll talk around later, is you'll re develop a good understanding of not just flight, di flight dynamics, but also the whole embedded stack, the electronics. And a quadcopter is literally a mechatronic product, which is it's got a little bit of mechanical engineering in there. It's got a little bit of electronics, a little bit of um, electrical and software. And when you combine all of that, it's a mechatronic system. And if you don't, if you just buy off the shelf product, you're kind of, you know, leveraging that knowledge to someone else to develop something for you and you're just making a product uh, or just, you know, assembling a product without really truly understanding what's really going under the hood. So that's what this video series is all about, is to try to get a get deeper understanding of what's going on under the hood. So in the first video, actually, we will talk about what I've already built in terms of the quadcopter, the electronic stack, and how we how you can now make something very similar designing your own electronic stack and once and that will be a high level video we won't go, go technical in there we'll just show you a demonstration of you know what's already been built but the first true technical video will be or the second video in this particular case would be the embedded stack and we'll start off with the radio and communication between the radio and the host mcu so what we have over here is the radio control module which will be connected to the host system and how we can communicate this, how we can interface this with the radio, with the quadcopter using the radio module. This particular case, we're using the NRF24 L01 plus connected to the Arduino, which is connected to the laptop. And we send signals using, using UART, which eventually sends signals to the microcontroller. The microcontroller sends the interface to the radio and the radio sends the signal wirelessly to the quadcopter and really understanding how that how the wireless communication works designing your own protocol designing your own communication stack is actually be a fun exercise this way you you will learn what really goes into making a handle controller the second part will be how do you interface with an electronic speed controller and how do you make the motors rotate now if you buy the off the shelf flight controller this is doing all the sending the signals and communicating with the ESC and making the motor spin is done kind of, it's abstracted from the user. In this case, what we'll do is we'll use the microcontroller, we'll use our off the shelf Microsoft microcontroller, and we start to program the algorithms that help rotate the ESC or help send the signals to the electronic speed controller, which eventually will make the motors rotate. We'll talk about the timing diagram, what's the pulse like, uh, what's the signal that you need to send so that you can make your ESC work for you. And then once we are able to rotate the motor, we have the radio communication. Believe me, it'll be very fulfilling just getting those few things working because you know, you're seeing something working. 
you're seeing the motors move, you're, you can communicate wirelessly. I mean, how cool is that? But we'll go one step further. And this time we'll interface with the IMU. The IMU is the inertial measurement unit. And what it does is it gives you the orientation of the quadcopter. So there are two ways in, in which we can communicate with the IMU. One is by sending a signal wirelessly, and then the quadcopter could send those signals wirelessly back, and then we can print them out on the screen. Now this will be good if you don't want real-time analysis and you're willing to make some uh, sacrifice with um, some timing and, timing and logging. So just to get a general sense of what the quadcopter's orientation is. But we could also interface directly from the quadcopter by you know moving around by connecting wires to the quadcopter using UART and then getting those signals real time from the IMU so there'd be much less lag because now you're connecting it directly to the computer that is connected to the IMU sensor. When I say computer, we're talking about the microcontroller on the quadcopter. So we'll talk about different ways in which you can interface with the IMU. And this embedded stack, we're really looking at you know different protocols like the I2C, SPI communication, the UART, a radio, controlling of the motor. This is the high level embedded system protocol stuff, which will be real fun and will be very rewarding when you get everything working. It will also be kind of frustrating when things don't work because you might need certain tools in order to debug and make sense of why is this not working or why is this working. We'll talk about reading through the data sheets of the components to get, to get a better sense of you know, what signals are we sending so that we can interact with the components. Things like, especially with the IMU sensor and with the radio channel. Once we get everything working, at least at the embedded level, we can make the motor spin, we can communicate with the, through radio, we can get the IMUs working. Then it goes, then we'll move on to things that are more mechanical, or sorry, are more technical. Uh, we'll start dealing with the physics of how these things work so that we can make our quad copper more intelligent. It can fly uh, more precisely. It's not, it's, it can do certain things that you that you you wanted to you wanted to write you want to write certain computations into the system so that it's able to be more stable and it won't just crash and that's when we talk about flight dynamics and control so the first part of the flight dynamics and control part will be sensor fusion so we'll take the IMU reading and then we'll say if we know what the gyroscope reading is we know what the accelerometer reading is what what would be the general orientation of the quadcopter and by understanding how what the orientation of the quadcopter is we can do flight dynamics on top of it but without understanding the orientation it's very difficult for us to do to write any control algorithm so that's the reason why sensor fusion is in number one because we'll take the accelerometer and the gyroscope reading we'll apply some filtering algorithms such as you know Kalman filter or complementary filter and we'll get some form of orientation and from there we'll start to process process this inform that information to you know design the control algorithm but before we even get to designing the control algorithm we would need to understand how to design the quadcopter what is the transfer function or state space depending on how we're modeling the system what is the mathematical model of the quadcopter and how can we model it just based on first principle when i say first principle we're looking at the physics, you know, what's the weight of the quadcopter? What's the dimension of the quadcopter? What's the in center of uh, center of gravity of the quadcopter? What's the moment of inertia? And all of those things we can, you know, mathematically measure. And based on those quantities, we can start to derive the general sense of how the quadcopter would behave if you say put, you know, certain force on two of the propellers what would be the general way in which the quadcopter could rotate? Or if you don't put, or if you, you know, change certain parameters or dimensions into the system, how does a quadcopter behave? When I say something of changed dimensions in the system, what if I, you know, uh, make the arm shorter or if I make the arm bigger? Or if I make the quadcopter smaller, or if I change the weight of the quadcopter. And all of those things can be modeled using first principles. And we'll get into the real, you know, few mathematical models over here so that we can at least, may not be completely accurate, but at least get a general sense of what the quadcopter uh, looks like from a mathematical standpoint. So it will be pretty technical, this particular part, because if you don't understand what the quadcopter model is and you can derive it first principally you can also derive it using system identification which is you take the quadcopter as a black box you give it some input and you observe some output 
and you can observe the output this is where sensor fusion would be helpful because now you're giving it say a motor speed and the output would be the orientation and you constantly do this for a variety of uh, inputs and outputs mostly you change the frequency of the input signal and you change and you see how the quadcopter is constantly behaving so so that's a much more advanced way of doing um, of deriving the model so we won't do system identification in this video series eventually we will be doing it but not in this particular video series but the first principle modeling will be very important in terms of truly understanding what's really going on under the hood of a quadcopter and getting a sense of the mathematics behind it and last but not the least once we have the model of the quadcopter then we can apply a control algorithm and a control algorithm will help us fine-tune parameters so that when you send a signal of say you know 10 megahertz or you know sorry not 10 megahertz of 10 percent duty cycle to a to the motor in order for it to um, say hover you don't want it to be flying high you don't want it to be flying low you just want it to be stand still how does that translate into the comp into a control algorithm making your quadcopter stable what is going on in here how does it make sure that the quadcopter is not moving and this is what a control algorithm would do it's basically saying i understand the model of your quadcopter and if i give it certain inputs i know it will be able to stay in a much more stable position but i need to understand your model first and from understanding the model of the quadcopter mathematically it's able to control that model mathematically so that's the that's the subject of control systems and we can get into a rabbit hole of designing control systems there's a lot there's a huge field behind it and it's a very mathematically intensive um, subject but the goal over here is to just touch the surface and to get something working as soon as possible and and as you keep getting good at it you keep improving on the you know the radio communication you start improving on the embedded stacks you start improving on your on your um, on your sense of fusion algorithm, you'll be start improving on your modeling of the quadcopter. You start to make it more accurate, uh, and then you start improving on your control systems. So, getting a first kind of a taste of how this all works can set you up in the future to constantly refine this process and model so that you become really good at designing not just quadcopters but any embedded systems and robotic systems that require you know motor control, sense of fusion flight dynamics and a control system for sure and that's what this video series is all about let's talk about what this video series will not particularly entail we won't be designing our own custom boards in this particular series though there are other videos that i've already made on how to create your own you know custom boards such as um, your own electronic speed controller your own radio module and maybe even your own IMU. So this particular board um, video series will not touch into designing the electronic side of things, at least not at the PCB level, to be more clear. We won't be writing our own ESC motor drivers. So in this particular case, we'll be using off-the-shelf ESC and these off-the-shelf ESCs, uh, electronic speed controllers already have their own driver in here. So all you gotta do is just send in a signal and it will do the MOSFET switching. Because when we're talking about electronic speed controller motor driver, it's a it's a pretty intense subject. Um, we're talking about how do you send signals to the MOSFET so that it spins the motor. You get back EMF. There's a timing diagram to it. And I'll do a video series, a separate, completely separate video series on how to set up your own ESC motor right from the grounds up, designing the components, designing um, the hardware, writing the algorithms, and making the motor spin. But in this particular case, we will bypass this particular step and just use off-the-shelf product just to get the whole idea of how you can interface with an ESC. And as I mentioned, we won't be using any flight flight controller as well. Primarily being is, if you use a flight controller, there's a lot of abstraction that you don't need to know and you can just get anything working. But if you don't buy a off-the-shelf flight controller and you start to implement your own flight controller, that's when it starts to get a little challenging. And that's where the true knowledge, I think, is there to be gained. And that's what we really want in this particular video series is for you to get an understanding of if I use my own flight controller, or buy my own microcontroller, can I get this working? And what are the steps needed for me to get everything working? And that's really the objective of this video series. So I highly recommend you to subscribe so that you'll be notified whenever I keep updating this video. 
um, adding new videos in this video series and you will be the first to be notified all right and uh, on that note um, I I wish you good luck I hope you gain as much as I you know enjoy making these videos and uh, please listen to the next video thank you